Hey guys, how's it going? It's that nerd Ryan here, and today we're going to be talking about the first of the Disney movies, which is Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Now, before we get into the video, I do, gotta do the housekeeping stuff. Make sure you guys are commenting and down below. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, again, comment, and subscribe. Um, also, I do have a lot of social media stuff like Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. So make sure you guys follow that. And also make sure you guys follow my Twitch stream. Hopefully by the time this video is up, since I am recording this in April, I should have a capture card by then, so we should be able to go ahead and be live streaming some shiny hunting daily. So make sure you guys go up and do that. Anyways, let's get into the video. So The Force Awakens here is uh, ranked a 9 out of 10 for me, or 9 out of 16 for me, which means it is in the upper tier of the movies, actually higher than A New Hope. So I do want to say, though, that I do want to make a little bit of a correction. I did rank it higher than A New Hope, even though it is basically the same movie. I do want to switch those two around then. Um, just basically kind of make them tie with each other in both spots. Which I know doesn't sound about right, but it is. And at least in my head. And now let's actually start talking about why I like this movie and some of the dislikes. So we are introduced to a brand new slew of a cast and characters on both the light and the dark side. We even have two new teams. The Rebel Alliance, I mean the Resistance, and the Empire, I'm, I'm sorry, the First Order. Why I messed up there is because they're basically the exact same thing. Which again, which we kind of talked about in Return of the Jedi, is it does feel like then it defeats the purpose of Episode Six. But also on top of that, it is kind of an interesting look when you truly think of it, of three different things. One being... Star Wars poetry, where everything rhymes. Uh, if you don't understand what Star Wars poetry is, look it up. Again, I keep promising stuff like this, but I may make a video in the future explaining what Star Wars poetry is. Another thing is, it is a true reflection of the real world, where a massive regime falls, and there are people that want to replace it in almost the exact same way. And then also with the fact of history repeating itself. So basically the First Order is a bunch of Empire fanboys, when you truly think about it, that take it way too much to the extreme. And the Resistance is basically not backed by the New Republic because the New Republic is too uh, bureaucratic to do anything. However, the Resistance knows that they have to defend against the First Order like the Rebellion defended against the Empire. So we're introduced to Poe, who is a resistance pilot, Finn, who is a defective stormtrooper, and Rey, who is a scavenger that turns out to be Force-sensitive. We also are reintroduced to Han and Chewie, and Leia, and we are also introduced to their son, Ben Solo, a.k.a. Kylo Ren. So, there is a lot of stuff that you're going to notice me repeat in the next two videos along with this one, is that the big problem that I had with these movies is nothing is really hidden for too long. The two things that were, were who was Snoke and who's raised parents. What I mean by they weren't held on for too long is basically everything else that is supposed to be a plot twist or a surprise in a movie happens in that same movie. So they set up about basically Kylo Ren knowing somebody in the Resistance, talking about the Falcon, knowing about the Falcon, everything like that. And then we're immediately told that Han Solo is his father. What I would have done to critique that is basically make it where they kind of hint that he knows what the Millennium Falcon is. They kind of hint that he has a past related with the main crew from the original trilogy and stuff like that. And then when Han yells Ben, we realize that Han is 
Ben's father. I feel like that would have been a major, major boost in the movie of just, we don't know who this Kylo Ren guy is. We've seen his face for like one scene. We know that he's obsessed with Darth Vader. We know that he knows Han, Luke, or Leia for some reason. And then it's, oh my god, it's because it's Han and Leia's son. That would have been great. Um, there's another thing that happens in Rise of Skywalker, which we'll talk about in Rise of Skywalker. Doesn't really happen in The Last Jedi, which I think that means that it's more of J.J.'s fault than it is just the sequel trilogy in general. I might have to look back really quick and just talk about that before I record the video. But I do want to say that um, that is basically my main issue with this movie, is that for the stuff that doesn't get revealed it kind of feels like it was revealed with no, or not revealed because they didn't have an answer yet. And for the stuff that's revealed, it was revealed too quickly. I remember seeing this in theaters on opening night and being so excited and not remembering that. But one other thing that stood out, which looking back isn't really that big of a gripe about it, but something that like processed in my head, I, I I want to take a quick tangent here, sorry, and just tell you what processes in my ha head when I take a girlfriend to see a movie. Um, and it's also kind of basically what I feel like when somebody is being introduced to a series. So this is why I want to explain this really quick and why it stood out for me because it would stand out probably for a non-Star Wars fan. So... Basically, this happens all the time at some point in any movie if I'm taking somebody that's not a big fan of something to see a movie of a giant franchise. So, I remember watching Force Awakens in theaters and nothing big, like, really happening that I would be like, oh my god, she's not going to like this or they're not going to like this, until Ray showed up. And I'm not saying that Rey's a bad character. I do actually like Rey. I do agree that she's overpowered. But I feel like when you're a focal point in the Force, which, again, we'll make a video later talking about that, um, you do have that overpoweredness. But her first lines are not in basic. And that was when it hit me of, oh my god, people are probably not going to like this movie. Now, I knew that Ray was going to talk in basic later on, but your first impression of her, and it still sticks to me to this day, her first impression, is her not speaking in basic. It is speaking in Tito, or Huddies, I can't remember what it actually is. But I just remember sitting there and like my face dropping, going, oh my god, she's not going to like this movie. And I'm not sure if I'm the only one that felt that way, I'm actually curious, I know I say please comment below so that way you guys can help me with the algorithm, but in all seriousness, if you're watching this video this far, please comment down below on if you had that feeling too, because I just want to know if I'm crazy or if everybody else kind of thought that. So let's stop talking about the negatives and let's talk about the positives. So I did like this new cast of characters, my favorite in this entire trilogy, but especially in this movie, is Kylo Ren. Um, and other than that, the two other introduced characters, Phasma and Hux, are kind of just forgettable. But any scene with Han Solo is the best scenes in the movie. Harrison Ford, even though everybody says that Harrison Ford did not want to be Han Solo anymore, he made this movie. Him and Peter Mayhew as Chewie made this movie ten times better and just his interactions with everybody and how he became a mentor and everything that was the best part of the entire movie my favorite scene obviously is the scene where he confronts Kylo Ren I also like the fight on Taco Dono where he's shooting around and he doesn't even look and he shoots the guy which also brings up my other favorite part which is Traitor uh, that was just one of the coolest scenes to see in theaters, and every time I see it, I kind of giggle. So, yeah. That is my thoughts on Force Awakens. Next week, we are doing something very controversial and talking about The Last Jedi. 
I will try to be impartial about it, but I will probably end up defending most of it. So, please don't unsubscribe if you disagree. Um, and please subscribe if you do agree. So, thank you guys for watching. Again, like, comment, subscribe. And make sure you follow me on all my socials down below. It's that nerd rhyme letting you guys know that we're all Jedi Masters on the inside. Thank you.